Good morning. Today we are going to investigate the relationship between the temperature of a magnet and the force it can exert. In addition, we'll also, via the experiment, calculate the Curie temperature for ceramic magnets. This is the temperature at which point the magnet loses all of its magnetism. So let's commence operations. To control the temperature, we have placed the magnets in warm water. At 59 degrees Celsius, we'll begin to measure the force acting between these two magnets. As the water cools, we'll continue to record the force every decrease of 1 degree Celsius. And the experiment finished at 40 degrees Celsius. So we started the experiment at 59 degrees Celsius, and as the water cooled, we stopped the experiment finally at 40 degrees Celsius. This is the equipment that we use to measure the temperature of the water, which is in effect the temperature of the magnets. We have a probe that's connected to a GLX, and notice I've circled the temperature there, 49 degrees Celsius. So what about the force? Force is a bit trickier to measure, but we're going to use this balance to measure the force. Now before we get into the details, I want to just show you a basic demonstration. If we press down on the magnet, we add a force downwards and let's see what happens to the balance. Well, notice the mass increases. If we lift up the magnet, well, we're adding a force upwards and look what happens to the balance. Notice the mass got significantly lighter. So could this be done with another magnet? Well, yes, we can. When magnets repel each other, we're adding a force downwards. Let's see what happens. Notice, because the magnets are repelling each other and we're adding a force downwards, the scale registers a much greater mass. And literally at that point, I could really feel the force in my fingertips as I was holding the other magnet and they were repelling each other. And if we simply flip the magnet, now instead of the magnets repelling each other, they'll attract each other. And now we'll have a force pointing upwards. Let's see what happens. These magnets are attracting each other. And notice the mass gets lighter. This is exactly the same as if I was to lift the magnets. And so today you'll need to record this data. The mass of the magnets is exactly 118.61 grams. Determine the weight or the force of gravity by multiplying by the acceleration due to gravity. And we end up with 1,163.6 million newtons or in significant digits, 1,160 million newtons. Please record that number. You'll need that number today in this experiment, and that number never changes, by the way. So this is our basic experimental setup. We have our water, which has warmed up one of the magnets. We have a probe that's measuring the temperature, and we're going to use this scale to measure force. We've oriented the magnets so that they're attracting each other. So how do we know they're attracting each other? Look at the mass. Originally the mass was 118.61 grams, but now it's only 90.46. That's because this magnet here is lifting up on that magnet there, lowering the mass. Now balances don't measure the force of gravity. They actually measure the normal force. So to get the normal force, we take whatever the mass is as registered by the scale, and we multiply it by the acceleration due to gravity. There's our answer. In significant digits, there's our answer as well. So if we look at our free body diagram, force of gravity points downwards, and normal force and the magnetic force point upwards. Magnetic force points upwards, remember, because the magnets are attracting each other. Notice the acceleration is zero. The magnets never move throughout the entire experiment. And so we have a situation where the forces are balanced.
where all the forces acting downwards are equal to all the forces acting upwards. That's what that statement says. F normal plus F magnet equals FG. It's telling us that, that all the forces acting down have to equal all the forces acting up. Rearranging the equation, we could solve for the magnet force. That's the force of gravity subtract the normal force. So in this situation, after doing all the math, Taking our numbers, we get a magnet force of 276 millinewtons. So here's our first data point, 59 degrees Celsius, 91.77 grams. So here's the table I'd like you to complete. Please ensure you copy out the title. Please ensure you copy out the units. And this table will extend all the way down to 40 degrees Celsius. Notice we only write the weight or the force of gravity once, 1,160. Why only once? Because it doesn't change. To calculate the normal force, here's how we do it. We always take the mass as registered by the scale, multiply by the acceleration due to gravity, and there's our values. I've also written number in significant digits. To get our magnet force, here's the calculations for that. We subtract the weight and normal force, and for our first data point, it's 263 millinewtons. And so there's our first row filled out. Your goal now is to complete the rest of the table. Here's our second data point, 58 degrees Celsius, 91.7 grams, 57 degrees Celsius, 91.64 grams, 56 degrees Celsius, 91.57 grams, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, notice the mass, 49, it's getting lighter, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43 degrees Celsius, 42 degrees Celsius, 41 degrees Celsius, and finally, 40 degrees Celsius. Clearly, there's a trend going on. And so today, I'd like you to make a graph of magnetic force and temperature. Temperature is on the x-axis because that was the variable we were in control of, and magnetic force is what we were measuring. My expectations today, I want a professional title. Please just don't write Y versus X. I want a line of best fit. I want the slope. I want a sentence explaining what the slope means. And finally, I want the Curie temperature. Now, the Curie temperature is when the magnetic force will be exactly equal to zero. So based on this graph today, you should be able to figure out when the magnetic force is exactly equal to zero. And when you get that magnetic force equaling zero, that's your Curie temperature. Now, according to Google, this is the Curie temperature for the magnets that we use today. And I think if you do all the math right, you're going to be amazed by the value that this simple experiment gives us today. Just amazed. Because you're going to see that it's very close to the answer that Google gives us. So I hope you enjoyed today's experiment. Have a great day.